Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Flow Show. <laughs> Funny how sometimes you know just exactly what people get up to. I was commenting earlier in our chat room about uh, some Bloomberg stories and how it's a bit quiet and they're struggling for headlines. And uh, I said, watch out for some sources, pieces to drop for them to try and justify their two and a half thousand dollar fee per month. And they've just dropped a sources piece on the Bank of Japan saying that they might look to up their CPI forecasts uh, potentially at the next meeting. So there we go. Morning, Kay. How you doing, mate? Good morning, Ryan. Morning, everybody. Yeah, I'm uh, doing all right, mate. Doing all right. Watching the show, having the popcorn, and uh, yeah, just watching what's go what's going on in these markets. Yeah, very much so. And uh, that headline's given uh, dollar yen a little knock on the head. A few pips. Speak. As uh, it wants to do, there we go. So, uh, yep, exerting their uh, what should we call it? Their authority on the market, shall we say? Their ability to move markets with a piece out of thin air. We'll see whether that comes to pass anyway. Um, right, <clears throat> let's crack on and uh, get stuck into things. Uh, we're gonna start over in Japan. Ueda was uh. Speaking before the bosses overnight, says Japan's economy is showing some weakness, but recovering moderately. Uh, says we must watch FX and market developments and their impact on the economy and prices. Uh, he said if FX moves have an impact on the economy and prices in a way that's hard to ignore, we will, of course, respond with monetary policy. Um, so a lot of uh, FX talk now at the... Uh, BOJ, um, as we know, since they uh, brought uh, rates to zero, um, they've been talking about FX being a uh, big watch point for them as well now. And uh, they'll be watching 152 as much as the rest of us. Uh, we had a little bit of data out uh, from Japan, machine tool orders um, coming in a bit soggy again, down 8.5% versus minus 8% previously. Um, that's uh, one area that you either will be uh, remarking on in showing weakness. The manufacturing side of things still looking uh, uh, very soggy over there as well. Um, there's not been an awful lot of uh, stuff out. There's no, been no real data out this morning uh, in uh, Europe. A um, bit of trade balance data there uh, for France. Um, but otherwise, it's been... Fairly quiet, uh, so we'll get uh, straight into uh, the US stuff. Uh, the New York Fed um, out with their uh, seaweed, shall we call it, seaweed forecast for economy and inflation. Um, they say for the third consecutive month, the one-year inflation expectations remained unchanged at 3% in March. Um, however, three years ahead, inflation expectations increased to 2.9% from 2. 7%, uh, although the five-year inflation expectations went the other way, 26 from 2.9%. But uh, those nearer-term inflation expectations rising will be of concern to the Fed. And obviously, we've got CPI coming up. Uh, Fed's Goolsby, um, I don't know if he had a little uh, slap on the wrists from Powell, but uh, he was a little less hawkish in uh, some comments last night. It says the economy remains strong. And the jobs data confirms this and says the Fed must determine how long to be restrictive on monetary policy. It says the economy is getting back into better balance. Uh, no uh, repeat of his comments saying that it may come to a point where the Fed may not have to hike at all. Uh, sorry, cut at all. Uh, Fed's Kashkari, um, he was just talking about the jobs market, uh, said the labour market is no longer red hot, but still tight. Um. JP Morgan CEO uh, Jamie Dimon says that the UK economy is still resilient and consumers are still spending. Uh, markets currently expect a soft landing economy fueled by government deficit spending and past stimulus, and that inflation may be stickier and rates higher than expected. Then you note on the uh, consumers still spending. I'm not sure what they're spending on because the last few. Uh, couple of uh, retail sales numbers haven't been uh, overly great. Um, also been highlighting that uh, 
the current state of play for the Fed and the hike, uh, sorry, I keep saying hike, the cut landscape. Um, Fed fund futures uh, yesterday um, for December saw that uh, the market now expecting only around 60 basis points in cuts this year. It was 150 basis points and uh, had been higher than that coming into the start of 2024. Um, 25 pip cut in the June meeting is now less than 50%. It's 59%, uh, sorry, 49%. Um, and that's down from 57% a week ago. That's uh, according to the CME watch data, or data watch, what they call it, Fed watch. Um, Citigroup been talking about the ECB. Um, they now expect the ECB to give us four 25 pip cuts by year end, they were previously forecasting five, so they've had the tipex out. Um, on the oil front, Mexico is going to be cutting at least 330 barrels per day of crude exports in May, according to Reuters sources. Um, they say cuts could be up to 10 to 14 million barrels um, as production has fallen to a 45-year low. Um, geopolitics, <clears throat> excuse me, the Kremlin has said that uh, a possible NATO base in Lithuania could escalate tensions, That's still ongoing. Um, Israeli PM uh, Netanyahu says that a date has been set for a Rafa invasion. Um, now, this might be something because a lot of other countries have warned Israel against taking such action, um, whether this is just... Uh, a bit of jaw boning to get a deal done um, on hostages and whatnot. I don't know, but uh, Israel is saying that uh, a date has been set for that invasion. Um, the US has said that they've had no uh, pre uh, notice about that date. So, uh, all part and parcel of what's going on between the US, um, what's going on in Gaza, and obviously keeping an eye on what's happening with Iran as well. Um, that's all I've got on the headlines. It's been a quiet. Uh, Day or two. Uh, Kay, got anything uh, swung by your radar? I uh, really, uh, really been uh, been extremely quiet. Um, no, I, I, I really haven't seen much. Uh, people talking about the earnings season um, about to start, stickier yields, um, stickier re rates um, should be okay for the banking sector, but then uh, other stuff is probably. Less good for corporates or so. Um, no, not really. Um, the Japanese officials comment a lot, right? Um, and not only Suzuki, but Ueda as well is, is repeatedly talking about uh, FX. And um, although, I mean, the base case is for, for, for them to continue to hike in, in Q, um, yeah, Q3 or second half of their fiscal year, so from, from September or so uh, onwards. Um, but I don't know. I, I mean, if we if we get this continued continued strength in uh, in the dollar, and, and it's probably nothing with uh, to do with this month, but um, I, I'm starting to think we we should be somewhere at least. Um, Take into account the possibility that they hike a bit sooner that, uh, than than what the uh, global expectations are, um, especially if, uh, if, as I said, if if we stay weak in uh, in the end, because um, it, it is a it is a pretty decent scenario for them. If you look, uh, dollar yen has been very stable, but hanging towards those highs, uh, and and the euro the yen crosses are gen um, in general also moving higher again. Um, I, I think we may we may need to um, to take it into account. You know um, that that is something I was thinking about uh, this morning. And I'm not saying I'm going to buy yen on the back of it, but um, I there may just be that little bit of speculation coming into um, what what do we have like the 26th or so of this month. Um, yeah, the 26th. We are still like a good two weeks away. Uh, but I wouldn't be, I wouldn't actually be surprised to see a little bit of speculation to um, ahead of what Ueda and his uh, and his pals may say uh, in the next uh, Bank of Japan meeting. So um, I don't know. There's there's perhaps something brewing there. Um, that's what I was thinking about this morning. Yeah. So you think uh, they may be stepping? I saw you put that piece in the newsroom. Uh, 
saying uh, just as much as well. Um, so you think uh, there may be a, an early hike coming in, do you? I, I, I wouldn't dismiss the, the possibility. Um, I wouldn't dismiss the possibility. Um, it, it's... Um, Especially that the way that he's talking, he's talking about the about the yen in uh, in in most most of his uh, interventions in the diet and everything. Now um, they're talking about it, so it's something that that I'm just going to um, to keep an eye on. You know, um, yeah. <clears throat> if if only they if if they only hike their inflation expectations and not do nothing uh, for the rest and uh, because he at the same time he is also saying that they will keep the 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 monetary policy uh, uh ample and uh, um what's the term um like uh, yeah on on the low side um but I don't know. It's uh, something that I'm uh, starting to think about. Uh, yeah, they, they they could actually use the the yen level if it stays here, um, and, and if the yen stays low, they could they could actually use it as an excuse to raise uh, rates a bit earlier than than what the market may expect. And uh, that that makes the this this April meeting um, interesting again. I would say. Yeah, very much. So. I mean, the, the, the precursor to uh, moving or ending negative rates was those hikes in the uh, inflation forecasts um, the first time around. So uh, them doing it again, as you say, may lay, lay the groundwork. But uh, I think the data has got to do a hell of a lot more than it is now um, before they start uh, hiking again. But uh, as you say, it's the progress. If they see the progress, that may get them uh, moving on it. So we shall see. We shall see. Um Right, not a lot. To, <clears throat> excuse me, voice is going now. Um, not yeah, a lot what's coming happening? out. Uh, you catch a cold? Yeah, caught a cold. We've all got it here in the uh, uh, Littlestone household. So uh, uh, probably that probably that trip to London, walking around uh, the museum with thousands of people, lots of lurgies walking about. Anyway, we shall work. Life goes on. The world keeps turning. But uh, yeah, I was saying not, uh, <clears throat> not a lot of data um, on the list today so it's going to potentially be another quiet one we're all going to be sitting watching whether uh dollar yen can break 152 again um if bloomberg is to be believed that's uh push the walls from the door for the next five minutes but as you can see we keep tapping up here keep having a go um but it's not breaking uh just yet um <clears throat> one pair we'll have a look at quickly dollar mex uh that one is well on its way seemingly unstoppable at the moment it just keeps breaking down and breaking down um these couple of levels here go back to 2015 um so you've got to go way way back um to see those there you go <clears throat> just that area of price action that we got back there um on the month and uh, noted in our chat room we are just getting towards the 200 Monthly moving average, 16.23. So that might be somewhere where we see a bit of support coming in. Uh, otherwise, it's a fib. And then down at 15.60s is the next area for me of support. So this one non <coughs> non-stop, K. Yep, can't keep a good currency down, mate, and especially not when it's to, uh, when it's uh, interest uh, rates are at 11 percent. Um, yeah, I'm. I'm still. I'm still a bit short Euromix. Um, I, yeah, I, it's just. Uh, it don't change a win, don't change a winning team. I would say uh, it, it's just. Uh, yeah, I, I, they're still French shoring, near shoring. The, the the nervosity around the walls and stuff is probably going to be uh, uh, ignored at least by the markets for uh, for as long as uh, as as the elections are not ahead of us. Um, yeah, that is. There's not a lot else to say, you know. The Mex is still uh, one of the best, uh, one of the best out there, and uh, now it's getting a, a bit of help as well from uh, from risk, a bit of head, uh, help from uh, the commodity sphere. Um, it, it's got uh, it's got a lot of help from uh, from uh, many angles, and uh, yeah, as you're showing there, we we are having the CPI out today. It's actually the headline expected to rebound slightly. The 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 other one to remain. Um, sticky, 
if, yeah, I, it's not something that that is uh, unless we come out really far from expectations, the the uh, um, it's not going to change, right? Um, and uh, when when uh, when nothing else is uh, when nothing else is moving and uh, and uh, volatility is very low, as I've been saying already uh, um, a couple of times. When volatility, <clears throat> sorry, is very low, it's it's traditionally pretty good for the uh, for the high yielders as well. Um, so it's um, the mix still has a, a a lot going for it, you know. I um I must say I I I didn't think dollar mix was going to go uh, that fast, um, especially not seeing the the nervosity that there is over there about the migration situation and everything, but. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's it's really dropping very fast, and um, yeah, I, I've I've only got my next levels are, are as well, just around here, and then uh, starting to talk about uh, below uh, below sixteen, and on the uh, on the euro mix is about the same, uh, talking about sixteen, sixteen, and sixteen fifty sixty or so. Um, I showed this morning in the room again. Um, but be there, and if uh, and if the ECB starts to uh, confirm June and. Uh, um yeah I, I, it's, it's just the 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 the, the most logic and and the and the the softer side still the uh the, the path of least resistance is uh is is not to go against um high uh high yielders which are still uh enjoying uh near shoring and uh and and French shoring um that's uh yeah. Just the same, the same thing. It's been going on. It's been going on for uh, for for since after the pandemic, really. So, I mean, yeah, this this seems this one where the four year decline. The, huh? Yeah, this seems one that the the, the fundamentals really shaping up in favour of the mix. You know, like you said, you know, oil prices now rising, uh, kicking up a bit further. That's helping mm. the mix as well. The fact that it's become the biggest trade partner for the US helping the mix. So, you know, even though they may be entering a uh, their cut cycle or they're getting back to normal cycle, um, it's still beneficial for the currency. So like you say a lot, just because uh, the country's cutting rates doesn't mean it's uh, it means a weaker currency. Um, same for if inflation goes up, doesn't necessarily mean a stronger currency. Um, the fundamentals come in and they take over. And, well, and also, you know, it's uh, if imagine they cut... Uh... It's on. I think that from from the monetary policy um, side, it's only if they if and when they they are going to cut by fifty BPs at this at the, at one one time. You know, each time, then it's yeah. really a case of uh, of okay. Now we need to be a bit careful because if they're really gonna go on a fifty BP uh, uh, per not per meeting, but each time cutting, then the the interest rate differentials are over time going to 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 be um coming down relatively rapidly and then we need to be uh, a bit careful but but even if <laughs> imagine that they cut four times 25 bps the, the, over the next five six meetings or so i mean they're still going to be at 10 percent uh yeah but, but i think the the second half of this year going into the u.s elections that's where um we may see a bit more volatility um i.e um not one-way ticket um stronger in 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 the mix because we have yeah. seen, uh, when was it? Like February or so, early February, where um, where um, yeah, ninth, ninth or fourteenth or so of February, when uh, Trump gained those um, those first um, <clears throat> partial uh, partial elections or the GOP elections, uh, the the reaction that there were that there was in the in the mix, um, the session afterwards and a couple of sessions afterwards, that that is something that we just need to bear in mind going into the US elections. Um, and, and so that's where I expect a bit more volatility, but that is still, what is it, five, five six months away, seven months away. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I think we said it some months ago that the probably the biggest risk to the mix is uh, Trump presidency. Yeah, but, yeah, uh, it's well, Trump. But, but then, yeah. and, and, and as I've already been saying, you're, you are on the opposite, on the opposite of the spectrum um, versus the yen. Where we know the Bank of Japan is going to raise rates, but it's going to be so slow that 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 it's virtually not impossible. Of course, I mean, if they intervene, you're going to make four big figures on, uh, on if you're long yen. But if they don't, and if they don't change anything in April, if they because I mean, reviewing your uh, your your inflation 
higher, but not changing anything to interest rates. I mean, what is it going to do? It's going to put your JGP yields two or three BP higher, BP higher, and 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 that's it. I mean, you, you can hardly stay long yen for 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 the next three months because they're going to pay a fortune away in funding. And and the mix is on the opposite side of the spectrum. Um, and also, what I think you know, what can support the mix right now. Um, is that uh, uh, SAB has cut uh, cut rates? The 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 yields in uh, in uh, Switzerland are coming off. I mean, it may be another another currency pair that that joined the party, and another reason why the mix is so strong, because you are looking at uh, at the SAB cutting rates, so the Swiss franc getting a bit weaker. Well, we have another carry trade uh, coming uh, coming into play now. So. Part of what we see in the mix now could actually be a mix against the Swiss franc, uh, and and so it's still adding adding to the adding to the fund. Whether and, and and that's the Swiss has never been big. When when people talk about uh, people doing carry trades and stuff, okay, the mix is is one of the is one of the currencies that has been the most popular in in the carry trades, but. Per currency pair, if you look at mix yen, euro mix, um, mix Swiss now, if if I take that example, it's never going going to be a big percentage of of, a, of an asset manager's portfolio. But if they can take free money on 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 uh, on a carry trade, they are not going to let it just there and and not participate. They will participate in a certain way, and I think that is what the mix is enjoying right now as well, is that you've got another currency joining the, the party where you can do uh, a, a bit of carry trade against. Yeah, yeah, very much so. It's uh, been part and parcel of this one. Uh, it's nice to sit <clears throat> nice to sit in a trade where you're earning money while being in it. Yeah, um, I mean, that's what I've been saying for, for over the past yeah. three years, really, when I started to to, to buy mix. I mean, this is, this is like somewhere a, a, an ideal situation. Um, yeah, and especially the mix is also benefiting from uh, from uh, as I said from from the fact that a lot of people went out of China and and went into Mexico. So uh, uh, um, the proximity to the US uh, as a uh, as an exporter to the US has has increased dramatically as well. So I mean that that's the thing. I mean where where the mix is is enjoying more of a of a carry status than, for instance, the rand uh, is because of the proximity to the US as well. Yeah, very much so. Um, Ali, you're asking this question again about you know dollar weakness, dollar strength, and and I think I think you sometimes you want too much out of a market in terms of uh, where it's at and what it's doing. And I asked uh, asked this question yesterday of you. I don't know if you saw it. Um, you know what what level should the dollar be at if you think it's uh, you know not strong enough um, compared to data? You always have to factor in. <clears throat> context time what the market is expecting you know we've come through meetings feds ecbs data nfps in uh, inflation reports pmis okay the wider context is that central banks are going to be cutting because they want rates to get back to a normal level okay they're not going to be cutting down to zero we're not getting qe there is no reason for anyone's currency to weaken significantly nor anyone's currency to strengthen significantly. So that's why we get this ranging. You know, you look at a chart here, 2023, we've been in a three, 400 pip range in Euro dollar, you know, for over a year now. You know, that's because the market knows what's coming. So you have to take uh, your, your strength weakness question in context of the general market and its view on central banks and whatnot. You know, not every data point is going to bring you a 200 pip move. You'd be lucky to get 40 pip move uh, at the moment, uh, depending on the size of it. Um, volatility. <clears throat> volatility is a big point as well. We've been talking about that. But, uh, yeah, just uh, I just think you, you want a bit more than the, the market's going to give you, Ali. Okay, I'm going to hand it over to you, mate, because my voice is going to go. Yeah, I mean, what's uh, what's going on there? I'll... I'll, um, I'll... <laughs> Going, I'm going to uh, have a look at uh, what's coming up and what. Um, yeah, yeah let me just uh, put this let one. Hand it over. Hmm? There you go. All yours, mate. All yours. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, okay. 
just let me know if you want to uh, intervene. Yeah, I'm just going to go grab a water or something quickly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, mate. Um, yeah. So, uh, what's on the docket for the for the rest of the day? Uh, we already said. So we've got the here. So talking about these makes, we have the CPI upcoming. So that's uh, one thing. We do have minor uh, minor no, minor um, reports here in the um, out of the US. We have to uh, also take into account. We do have um, a, a pretty well packed auction week um, by the US Treasury is is auctioning quite a few. Um, bonds this week um although we haven't really seen too much of an impact on the uh, on the yield so far um and uh, we also have the vice uh, chairman uh, of the smb legal um speaking this uh, this afternoon um i'm going to have a quick look what what do we oh yes we have the next night for us that's uh, 3 a.m. London time, 2 a.m. GMT. We have the uh, the RBNZ uh, coming up. Well, 100% of the analysts think that they are going to keep the rates at 5.5%. Uh, it is supposed to be uh, globally a transition month this month for what are the, um, for what are the, 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 for what the central banks are concerned. Um, but I think a lot of, a lot will depend on the tone. And um, as I've already been saying, or has been a bit flip-flopping, and his latest comments were, I'd say, uh, a, a little bit back more onto the dovish side. I, well, base case is at 95%, they don't do anything. But there is always a non-zero percentage um, uh, chance that that actually they they may do something rbnz was one of the first uh, to hike as well in uh, in this um cycle so um we could see a bit of hints that they are closing in on a decision and i'm just looking they do have um in about a month's time in may they will be one of the first uh, ones as well to um uh, to come up with with something, so they they may be hinting at uh, at going a bit of ahead of the um, the rest uh, because the numbers have been I'm not going to say bad, but they have been average. Um, they they really have been average uh, of late. So um, I I'd say that there is perhaps a, a slight possibility that or is uh, erring on the. Um, on the soft side, okay? And then for those who are watching Scandies, we will have a Swedish um, uh, industrial production tomorrow. Uh, they're doing pretty well, the Scandinavian currencies of late. Uh, we will have the Norwegian uh, CPI coming up as well, expected to uh, to come off. And then uh, we ha will have, um, is it global retail sales tomorrow day? No, okay. Um, and then tomorrow, of course, we will have the, uh, the US CPI as well. So that, for what is on the program now, let's look at a few um, at a few things here on the uh, on the rate side. We have seen the uh, the move higher, and uh, it's sufficient to come back under the 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 break level here. We are just below trading four thirty nine on the US tens for the for the dollar to lose a bit of steam. Uh, we see we're seeing it globally in uh, in uh, in the dollar um, this morning. So um, that means we are still hanging on to uh, whatever happens over here is uh, is directing the uh, dollar moves as well, and then on the uh, the two year as well is uh, coming back to um, to where we are, and this is what uh, what Ryan was talking about um, on the CME watch, and um, I'm actually happy that they are rather watching at this thing than than rather the the. Um, the anticipation or whatever the the ping pong may do on the on on in the bond market because the bond market looks to be overshooting all those expectations or under or overshooting this so this is rather where we are now um, and this is um, so if you take the midpoint of the Fed funds for four thirty seven and a half right uh, five thirty seven and a half right now and you subtract those sixty BPs with that this is where your two and a half cuts are so that is the uncertainty where we are in right now. Um, 
it's actually quite funny that over the last uh, um, rise in all those uh, in all those years that the dollar did not really enjoy much of it. Okay, so um, that's uh, that's quite interesting. Some people are actually wondering um, why the dollar is not uh, um, making much more uh, of an advance, but I think a lot has to do with uh, just overall volatility, a bit of positioning. As well, what we saw in uh, in stuff like uh, Swiss had been correcting, and then uh, when when it's risk on, you know, um, it, when it's risk on, the the dollar tends to slip a little bit, and then uh, low yielders also um, feeling a bit of uh, a, a bit of downward pressure. Stuff like the yen, uh, Swiss remaining on the on the defensive as well. Um, right, dollar yen. Nothing's changing here. Um, on on the shorter uh, on the shorter end, I've got something around one fifty three and one fifty four as well. I think if we uh, at one stage that's going to be for tomorrow overshoot the C the the CPI if it remains too sticky, I reckon we take out the one hundred and fifty two. But then the intervention risk, in my opinion, is 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 really going to be there uh, because even you way that talking about the effects, as I said, is is making me uh, just a tad nervous. So. I, I'm still running my um, my option. I'm still running um, half of it on the, on the Dorian call. So for me, it can go up. But if if we really see that spike higher, I'm going to uh, to at least hedge my option and perhaps even if we see a real big spike higher, uh, even try a bit of a cash short for a, for a possible intervention play or so. Um, that <laughs> yeah yeah I needed to clean up my books, mate, uh, Brand um, at one stage. Um, but what's happening in the yen crosses is again um, telling. It's not only the dollar yen that is uh, hanging up, uh, hanging up around lofty levels. It is all those yen crosses again, and that's where I also think that makes the, the Japanese officials quite nervous. We are uh, creeping back towards the uh, one sixty five thirties, where uh, what, where the prior high was in the euro yen. If you look at stuff like uh, Aussie yen, remember there was this this like really long, long, long term uh, trend line. We are now um, testing it again. Um, those are really lofty levels, and and one could say without intervention, this is not going to change, and uh, and we, and we can continue actually to uh, to to go higher. But uh, a lot will depend uh, upon the speed, of course, of all these of all these moves, but. There's really not a lot of stopping this right now, okay? Um, Kiwi, perhaps a little less um, buoyant, but um, it, it's showing the same uh, moves uh, higher. And But I wanted to show one. And here, um, yeah, th this one I'm, I'm watching as well because it's... Um, it's starting to come back to levels from where we had... Um, was it not the sterling yen? I thought there was something in sterling yen happening. Um, oh, was it this one in the shorter term? It's also trying to uh, to again uh, uh, break out what we uh, what we started to do um, in in this correction phase. It's 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 looking to to break out again. We're above one hundred and ninety two and a half where right now. So this this could. This could con just continue to go as well in uh, in the sterling yen. So we see all those th all those yen pairs are still very very big. Um, that means the market is is still selling yen. Uh, I think rightfully so. Without the intervention th uh, threat, there is there is really not too much of reason to be uh, to be long yen, as I said. Um, but the Japanese officials talking every day about it, they will see all those. Moves and they will see the the um, the relative strength of the yen uh, uh, really collapsing uh, day by day and uh, in making them very nervous. So I do think that if tomorrow there is a an overshoot on the CPI and dollar yen goes for a walk, um, there, there there is a real intervention risk tomorrow. I would say uh, euro dollar quickly still the same levels. Um, it's coming back relatively easy to uh, to those levels. I wouldn't think there was too much of a reason. Uh, to really start to buy euro, but I also think that um, those little green shoots we were talking about is is keeping the euro up um, right now, and perhaps a bit of positioning as well. We are um, there's there's really nothing um, 
data-wise that, that are going to uh, to tell us that we are going for break. So I would expect a little bit of resistance um, around this 108 three quarters, but I would also equally not exclude because the market looks a bit long, dollars looks a bit short, the rest. <laughs> um, I wouldn't exclude that we go for a walk um, before the ECB, before the uh, US CPI uh, up into those low 119s on the euro, okay? Um, and, and there, I don't see too much reason for, for, for it to go anywhere, but I think there is far enough if we if we get up there for the for the euro dollar right now. Cable okay, exactly the same thing. Um moving up, moving up, and um we are getting into a bit of resistance here, 126.90 already here. The uh last week uh, uh Thursday spike around 126.80. We are trading bang on it. So if it goes, I think we can we can perhaps push a little bit. But then here, um, I think anywhere between 127, 20, and 40, that should be okay. That should be enough uh, for now. Um, Sterling is actually getting a, a, a little push um, right now. And and I also think that's uh, that's all right because we've had, and I don't think we showed that. Let, where is it? Um, let me find those, um, the economic calendar back. This one here was pretty pretty decent. The retail sales um, that came out for uh, March were pretty decent this morning. So that can be behind the um, sterling strength of the morning as well. So um, I think it's all a bit justified right now. Um, what else? Ryan already showed the, the dollar mix. I, I have a bit of levels there as well. I think euro mix is also on interesting levels here. <clears throat> this is coming back from um, 2013 lows. Um, but obviously, we have broken, right? We, we have broken down. Uh, if you look at here, 18, 18.05, that, that was a, a decent zone, even a bit higher. We, are, we have broken down on the, on the long term as well. But uh, this is a bit of an interesting uh, zone here. We are in uh, uh, around 1770. That's where we are right now. And then we're coming back to exactly where um, those dollar max levels are as well, 2015 levels, you know, 17 and a half. Uh, but then if you go back all the way to the lows on the post um, global financial crisis, 1660s. 16 and a half 1660s that that is where i think ultimately this could uh this could end up uh if if banksico is not getting all of a sudden more dovish it could be still a very medium term play because that's still like uh one full hundred um like yeah one one uh, mexican peso if you uh if you want to express it that way lower um it's five percent, six six percent. You know, in an emerging market, um, that is something that could be done. We have, we have done it uh, since uh, October as well uh, until now. So that can be done over the next uh, months, I would say. Swiss have you at, uh, yeah. CAD yet, mate? Tell me. Have you looked at dollar CAD? Not yet. Not yet. Okay. Do you want to take a look at it, or shall I? No, keep 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 you on the screen for a while. Um, I'm I'm getting uh, you know we were speaking about this in yes. It's, I'm, it's are you are you interested to to already step in here or are we waiting for here one thirty five thirties? I'm I'm uh, I'm I'm okay too because the, the the rest of the dollars look look a little um, on the offered side right now. I'm actually yeah, looking I'm, to wait around here. Um, yeah, I'm in, I'm in two minds whether to start around thirty five fifty. Just picking it up. I might. I might just scale it in some smalls. Do some at fifty. Do some at the yeah. fib. Do some into one thirty-five if seen. And uh, yeah, I'm not. I'm not going to go. Yeah. Or the whole trade at, at one level. I yeah. Think. For, th for those who were not with us, we were talking already about the Canada yesterday, and we we, we both agreed that um, Bank of Canada may be tempted to to start to. Um, are uh, on the uh, on the more dovish side, but that's for tomorrow as well, right? Um, Tomorrow, right? Yeah. Bank of Canada. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And the, so, um, yeah, and and now with the dollar coming back off, it may uh, give us a bit of opportunities to for 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 us at least uh, looking at this to um, 
perhaps build like just a small one um, to see to test if we if we are right in in our opinion um, about them starting to be a bit uh, a bit more dovish. So this this setback that we saw and yes, Ali, it it, it again failed above one thirty six. But then if you look at it, um, we we it's still in an it's still in an up uh, upside wedge, right? So. Um, I still think that there is uh, also a possibility that we find some support. Um, if we get some more downside here, that that would I reckon give a little bit of a uh, little bit of uh, of an opportunity to try. Um, but I'm also looking at stuff like this, and of, uh, unfortunately, it's already done a fair bit. Uh, but um, Eurocat um, could be one that uh, if we get. Um, if we get a, a, a bit of a setback here, but uh, I'll be looking at it, it should at least go, come back down like 60, 50, 60 points before I get interested. And then yesterday, I uh, yesterday, I and, and this is one that I've oh, I think I haven't traded in 10 years, I haven't traded Aussie Cat, but then I was looking at Aussie doing uh, doing slight, slightly better, and I said, like, why, why not? You know, with copper going higher, why not? And then I'm, I'm looked at this yesterday and uh, so like oh this already breaking and I'm I'm afraid we are not going to get a retest uh, back of the low 89s because I think this could be perhaps one if the commodities continue to go higher um that could eliminate a bit of a a, a bit of dollar also risk uh, if the dollar remains weaker and if you want to eliminate some dollar risk and this this could be a pair where I'm getting interested in if uh, if ever we get like a 50, 60 point setback here, I may give it a try on this Aussie cat because this looks like a bit uh, breaky to me as well um, to go higher. So this is what I'm going to keep a close eye on. And I've, I've only done the daily. I haven't done anything closer or tighter than that to, to, to see if there is a decent level. But as I said, already perhaps like 40, 50 points lower. This is one that I may uh, uh, give a little try um, as well. On Do you think... Mm. Do you think the Aussie's finally reacting to this this move in gold? Aussie, yeah, because you know Aussie Aussie's obviously a big gold currency as well. Yeah, no. um, I, I think for, not... for for one, I think the rand is starting to react to it. Uh, yeah. the the dollar rand is 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 coming off, and uh, with risk uh, seemingly doing okay despite the geopolitical, the dollar rand is one that is that is now reacting to the gold. Um, but yeah, I mean Aussie is one. Um, but again, it's a correlation that has been uh, that has been uh, completely gone for uh, for quite a while. But it, it it could, yeah. Those correlations it feels like it's, it comes it back. Like it's one, if you look at the Euro Aussie, for instance, it's coming off despite Euro yeah. go, going up. Euro Aussie is, is is coming off. Aussie is doing pretty well. Yeah, as I say, it's, it's almost as if it, it can't ignore the gold move anymore. You know, it's down. Yeah. You know, good what six hundred bucks this year uh, or just before this year. And, uh, you know, it's you can't ignore that. You know, if oh. you go back to uh, late last year, we're down yeah. or just before the turn of the year, down at 1800. You know, it's done a hell of a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. Uh, you don't usually get 600 buck moves that uh, the currencies ignore. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. Um, yeah, gold. We had that little bit of a setback. I mean, Usually on the Monday morning, we, we we may see this kind of thing, and then we got this setback, which we which we had, and that was a pretty serious setback, even like over thirty bucks. But it's already undone. We we're already going uh, going higher, and as I said, this uh, we are we are in uncharted territory, so we can only look at uh, at extension levels or so. Um, we are turning well already above this one, and uh, the next one is only at twenty three ninety. Where where that's going to to end up, I don't know. And I've read articles. I mean, people are really fishing at. I mean, it's probably a mix of of everything: central banks, uh, FOMO, uh, anticipation of lower yields, um, geopolitics. Um, you name it, and you name it. Um, it it's probably a mix of everything. Um, but. Yeah, I, I okay. The geopolitical risk is is not really abating, and I think, as we said yesterday, there is a bit of a risk. I think for the next twenty four forty eight hours regarding regarding our end, uh, because it's the end of Ramadan, and um, I, let's hope not. 
but uh, it, it's it may be a risk situation uh, uh, for the next 24, 48 hours in uh, in geopoles, and that may again uh, push this uh, push this gold uh, to uh, to fresh highs um, as well. And uh, and silver is really following this time as well. The the, the rest of the commodity sphere is uh, is is going up as well. Um, so silver is following as well. But I'm I'm also thinking of uh, I mean the next the next half a buck in silver. I'm going to start to uh, to 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 manage a little bit more of my uh, of my long term position around this twenty eight sixties. Um, if, if there's not more. Stress coming in from uh, from the geopolitical side, also I'm going to uh, to to manage uh, a little bit uh, more. Um, what else? But yeah, I mean, okay, yes, back to this to, to this Canadian dollar. Um, yeah, I think if if uh, as we were saying, if the Bank of Canada goes a little bit uh, on the mellow side, and I think there's there's risk there. This this could actually retest up in the one thirty sixes. But as I also said, I, I'd, I'd like. And I also like always like to look at crosses because the dollar is is something that people trade very much. It's the it's the most traded pairs. But since the US and the, and, and and Canada are neighbors, it's perhaps not always the best pair um, to to be in a dollar pair. So um, and and the dollar is also um, sometimes uh, in 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 crosses you get sometimes more smooth uh, moves. Because dollar pairs tend to move a bit together um, in, in in all pairs, and um, so the, the the cross side is is sometimes a little bit uh, smoother as well, and and a little bit more clear than uh, than a dollar pair. Okay, um, Aussie Kiwi is one that's going to move on the RBNZ, and um, so watch this uh, 109 70, 70 80 guys, and 109 70 80. If uh, or um, is going any uh, any more um, dovish, I think we may be in for a, for a move up into the one tens. Okay, everything same, neutral, whatever. I think it in turn this this may be uh, a, a decent uh, a decent resistance area for a move perhaps back into the mid one oh eights. But uh, if they go dovish. And if or if we even have a surprise that they 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 are the first cutting twenty five BPs, then we are trading well into the one tens and even perhaps one eleven on this one. All right, um, Michael, that managing more is is uh, is uh, closing some of my longs. I'm I'm long term long on uh, on silver. I've been managing this for years, really years. Um, I started actually to buy around around here, um, and and. Um, but I've been uh, adding on dips and then uh, letting some go on rallies, and then uh, I, I still get keep my long term long. And but I I think I always like to manage it a little bit, so I create room in the book in case of a setback to to be able to add uh, to add again. Okay, this is how I uh, I trade. Um, <clears throat> and that's uh, that's uh, it for me for today. Yeah. Thank you very much, mate. Uh, I'll just go back quickly before we close up shop. Uh, let's let me get the right screen first. That will help. Um, yep, just to finally make you aware of the new feature we've got at Forex Analytics uh, mentorship, one on one mentorship that we opened up last Friday. Um, we've got a new site there. I shall put the link in the chat for you so you can uh, grab that there. Um, do check it out. All Most of the team. Uh, offering their services on here as well. If you want to get some good one-on-one -on -one, uh, mentoring with us, any of the coaches here, any of the team at Forex Analytics, check that out if it will help your trading. Uh, we do have a special offer on that's uh, only going to be running till tomorrow, close of business tomorrow, and then that offer will disappear. Um, I know there's uh, very few slots available at the moment, so uh, get that checked out. And... Um, on that note, before my voice goes again, we shall call that a day. Um, do trade safe, folks. Uh, uh, have a good one. Thank you very much, Kay. And uh, we good shall time. see you all tomorrow. And, uh, yeah, hopefully my voice will be a bit better. <laughs> Thank you very much, everybody. Cheers. Hey, traders. This is Blake Morrow with Forex Analytics. Thanks for stopping by our YouTube channel. Don't forget to like these videos, share them, and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any of the content that we provide here for free. Thanks for stopping by. I'll see you in the next video.
Thank <laughs> you.